Okay, let's talk about this point. Um, this was former White House staffer Cassidy Hutchinson telling the January 6th investigation today that she heard Trump become, that, that, that she, was, she was told by the White House Deputy Chief of Staff uh, with the lead agent from President Trump's security detail sitting right beside him, told that Trump had become irate, um, told the head of a Secret Service tale that he wanted to go to the Capitol, even though he'd been told that they were bringing him back to the West Wing. She testified under oath that she was told that the former president then lunged at his security chief, a man named Bobby Engel, uh, also that he tried to grab the steering wheel of the vehicle that he was in. Now, obviously, these are bizarre and, as I said earlier, sort of lurid allegations about a president, maybe the most bizarre and lurid allegations we've ever heard about the behavior of a president in power. Um, we can't confirm these allegations, but they were made today under oath, and it is worth mentioning that the Secret Service has yet to deny them. That said, uh, in a statement released shortly after the end of today's hearing, the agency did say they are cooperating with the committee. Quote, the United States Secret Service has been cooperating with the Select Committee since its inception in the spring of 2021 and will continue to do so, including by responding on the record to the committee regarding the new allegations surfaced in today's testimony. Thereafter, a source close to the Secret Service told NBC News today that both Bobby Engel and the person who was driving that vehicle the president was in, that they're prepared to testify under oath that the incident never happened, or at least it didn't happen as Cassidy Hutchinson described it. That said, that's weird, too. Um, Bobby Engel did already testify to the investigation. He gave a deposition two and a half weeks ago. He's the lead agent on the president's security detail who supposedly was lunged at by the president. Uh, Cassidy Hutchinson's lawyer uh, responded to this NBC News reporting today by saying, uh, quote, Ms. Hutchinson testified under oath and recounted what she was told. Those with knowledge of the episode also should testify under oath. Joining us now is Carol Lennig. She's the Washington Post's Pulitzer Prize-winning national investigative reporter who is also the author of Zero Fail, The Rise and Fall of the Secret Service, who all of us immediately wanted to call as soon as we got to this point in today's testimony. Carol, thank you for making time to be with us tonight. I really appreciate it. Glad to be here, Rachel. So let's have it. What do you want to know? I want to know if it is logistically, physically, geometrically feasible for the grabbing at the steering wheel, grabbing at the Secret Service agent thing to have physically happened? So it would be very difficult in what is really called the beast, the limousine, the old Cadillac. It would be very difficult over the communications equipment. I'm informed by people who ride in that vehicle rather regularly for the president to have lunged over it towards his detail leader. The detail leader typically and almost always sits in the right front seat. It'd be very difficult to get over all that stuff. But, sorry, Rachel, there's a big but, which is this wasn't the beast. This was, he was riding, the president was riding on January 6th in what is called a, a suburban. And so this SUV, it happens to be the one that the president uh, drove in for his joyride around Walter Reed, so you'll recognize it. Um, this is one where it would have been possible, uh, a lot more easy for the president to lunge forward towards the right front seat from the back. Uh, that doesn't mean it happened. I'm just answering the question that that is a much simpler uh, geometric issue. The committee today did, it was, it was interesting to see this produced in terms of the way they rolled out the evidence. It was a very tightly produced hearing. And when they first started showing those images that we just showed moments ago of the president in that suburban, in what they described as the motorcade, we weren't sure why they were showing it. Are they conveying to us that he was waving through the window as it sort of looked at one point, there was some motion. Why, is, why are these images important? Uh, then, because of the detail that you're describing right now, the level of detail about what was imported inside that vehicle, it becomes important to know that he was in that particular presidential armored vehicle and not in the old Cadillac, not in what they call the beast. I guess, Carol, my next question, and maybe this isn't important, I'm just curious, is it unusual that he wasn't in the beast? Is it unusual that he was in the suburban instead of the presidential limousine? Yes and no. The, the SUV is typically used for off-the-record, last-minute movements. Mm. Now, of course, he knew he was going to be speaking at the ellipse, but it's a quick zip 
in and out. It's a much more agile kind of vehicle for the president's movements. And that's why, you know, for example, in that emergency situation, which, uh, you know, the president, the former president has sort of disputed that it was urgent, the president used the SUV to get to Walter Reed one time instead of the normal motorcade. It, it could just be that given the volume of human beings that were all over town, this was a more agile way for him to travel. I've heard some agents say that he preferred the SUV. He preferred the ride of it. That could also be it. But I can't answer definitively why it was used on January 6th. Carol, given what you know about the relationship between President Trump and the Secret Service during his time as president, what do you make of this revelation? There's, it seems clear that we haven't heard the end of it, that there are other people who will have known what happened inside that vehicle and whether or not a physical altercation actually happened between the president and that agent. Uh, there is, of course, the feasibility and the likelihood question of whether the president also lunged for the steering wheel of the vehicle. Just knowing what you know about these relationships and the people involved and how this evol that relationship evolved over time, what do you make of the credibility of those claims and their implications? Such a good question. I'm going to take this in two parts. First off, Cassidy Hutchinson presents herself, you know, as one of the most credible witnesses possible in this way. She had detailed description, descriptions of what she heard, what people told her, what she heard herself, what she knew for a surety. And she was very clear about making distinguishing remarks yeah. about how she learned these things. The way she learned this particular thing about an alleged altercation was allegedly from Tony Ornato, formerly President Trump's detail leader. Hmm. And uh, so that's important to know. The second part of your that I would would argue and, and, and stress, I should say, the second part I would stress is both of these individuals, Bobby Engel and Tony Ornato, were very, very close to uh, President Trump. And some people accuse them of, at times, being enablers and yes-men of the president, particularly Tony Arnato, very much um, people who wanted to do what he wanted and see him pleased. And that was frustrating to agents who were more focused on, say, security or being independent or good planning. So both of these individuals lose a little credibility because of how closely they have been seen as aligned to Donald Trump. And I think you know, because you're a careful reader, that there was a very large contingent of Donald Trump's detail who were uh, personally cheering for Biden to fail. And some of them even took to their personal media accounts to cheer on the insurrection uh, and the individuals riding up to the Capitol as patriots, that is problematic. I'm not saying that Tony Ornato or Bobby Engel did that, but they are viewed as being aligned with Donald Trump, which cuts against them. However, if they testify under oath, this is what happened, I think that's going to be important because Cassidy Hutchinson can only say what she heard happened. Yeah, I just, uh, it's, it's Chris Hayes, Carol. I, I just wanted to follow up on Ornato because he, he's a kind of zealot figure and sort of straddles the, both of your last books, right? The Secret Service book and then uh, the book with Philip Rucker because he appears in your in, in your reporting in the in the book of Philip Rucker in this very key moment in which, if I'm not mistaken, the vice president's national security advisor is on the phone with Ornato who has moved from being the head of the president's Secret Service detail to deputy chief of staff for operations in which the vice president's Security person is basically saying, I know that if he gets in the car, I know you people, you'll take him to Alaska. And he's saying this to Tony Ornato on that day. That is, I'm recollecting that correctly, right? That is the same Tony Ornato we're talking about here. Yes, Chris. And you've highlighted the two most important parts of that uh, personage in terms of the relationship with Donald Trump. One, he was viewed as being so pro-Trump that he was suspected. Yeah. Even though he's a professional, he's a careerist Secret Service agent, he was suspected by the vice president's top, one of his top aides, as being someone who would try to whisk Vice President Pence away from the Capitol at a critical moment. And Vice President Pence, as we reported in that book, and other aides were also incredibly suspicious of sort of the palace guards, so to speak, and their alignment with Donald Trump and whether or not they were the ones pulling the strings if Vice President Pence 
climbed into that car and Pence was absolutely determined. I'm, I trust you, Tim, is what he said to his Secret Service detail leader, but you're not the one driving the, driving the car and I'm staying here and finishing the job. Astonishing. Absolutely, absolutely astonishing.